What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So let me ask you a question. Have we reached peak smartphone? Marquez Brownlee recently did a video discussing this with a focus on the iPhone and rumors about the upcoming iPhone 14 lineup. He concluded that there is enough stuff each year still that kind of shows some innovation. But when I look at this year's Samsung Galaxy S22, I just don't see that. This is a great device from start to finish, but objectively, there's not a whole lot that's new or different or better than last year's S21. And that phone wasn't that much better than the S20. You can say that better by any measurement is still progress, no matter how minor it may be, but it's almost negligible at this point. It barely impacts day-to-day -day usage, and I'm not sure a device like this is worthy of a yearly release cycle anymore either. And I'll also say too that sometimes the changes we do get year over year aren't even better. They're just different. And in some cases, they're even a downgrade now. Mark has mentioned that year over year, we should still expect more processing power, more memory, higher resolution displays, more intelligence. Across the entire smartphone space, that's probably true. But in the case of Samsung's flagship phones these last couple of years, that's actually not true at all. Sure, the processors from Qualcomm and Snapdragon are still better year over year. Phones are more powerful and capable in that way, but we aren't getting more RAM. We've actually been getting less. The S20 offered 12 gigs. The S21 and S22 have since had eight gigs. We also lost the SD card slot, so less potential for storage. The display resolution is also lower than it once was. And to be honest, I don't know that my phone has gotten that much smarter in recent years either, whether that be the Android or my favorite third-party apps. Again, I wanna make it clear that this isn't a slight towards the S22 specifically. There's nothing wrong with this device. It's a powerful, capable, feature-packed flagship smartphone that I've enjoyed having Having. And that probably has five or six years of potential use, which makes it a great investment. And if you have a phone that's a few years old, you should get this one. That would be a substantial upgrade. But if you have last year's S21, there's definitely no reason to upgrade. I think the year over year must have hype of new smartphones is just not there anymore. And to be completely honest, I'm not sure what more Samsung could have even added to garner up any sort of hype or make this phone truly, objectively, excitingly better in the S21. Now, weirdly enough, one thing that did change with the S22 is actually its size. This year, it's a marginally smaller 6.1 inch device. You lose a tiny bit of screen real estate, shave off a few millimeters all around. It's lighter too in the hand, but in a world full of devices larger than 6.6 .6 inches, this phone is compact, comfortable, and a refreshing change. It's not only easy to use, but it feels less like I'm fully engulfed by this big portable display, and it definitely fits better in my pocket too. There's a plus version of the S22, of course, but I opted for this regular one because I wanted to try something that kinda is considered small by today's standards, and I'm glad I did. One other thing I'm glad to have seen, or rather felt, is the frosted glass around back. Samsung took the cheap route these last few years on their most expensive smartphones, adding a plastic rear cover. It was insulting in the embarrassing, even if it might have been more durable. A premium glass and metal build is just one of those things you like to see when you're paying this much for a phone, and I'm glad Samsung brought it back. And by the way, to protect those premium materials on my S22 these past few months, I've been using some of these ultra slim cases from Phoenix. And not just because they were kind enough to sponsor this video, but because I genuinely believe they offer a great product that delivers all the protection you need for your device while making it look like you don't even have a case on at all. Seriously, it's practically invisible. Phoenix makes cases for minimalists, those of us who still want the protection but who don't want the phone to be shrouded in a thick hunk of rubber. Phoenix cases are sleek and slim and add no extra bulk at all. And like I said, you won't even notice it's on the phone, at least until you drop it and breathe a sigh of relief knowing that it did its job. The cases are precision cut to give you that perfect fit around the corners, edges, cutouts, and buttons, and you've even got a little extra protection around the camera lenses with a raised edge and around the display. Phoenix cases come in black and matte black for a stealthier look, and this frosted white, which is my favorite here. If you're looking for a slim, minimal case that still offers proper protection, check out Phoenix cases at the link down below. There's a 20% off coupon too if you're interested, and thanks so much again to Phoenix for sponsoring this video. So one thing I always go back and forth on when it comes to Samsung's flagships is the display. On the one hand, this is one of the brightest, most colorful, most pleasing to look at screen setups that you can buy. But the silky smooth 120 hertz refresh rate 
as the cherry on top. It's a dynamic AMOLED panel, so every color pops, blacks look very dark, and with the slimmest of bezels surrounding a perfectly flat piece of glass, this is the most distraction-free viewing experience I think you could ask for. The resolution, though 2340 by 1080, or about 425 pixels per inch, isn't over the top, and for a flagship, might actually be a little disappointing. With a screen this small, 6.1 inches, it doesn't really matter. You won't be picking out any pixels. But Samsung used to push the limits with the 1440p screen on the S20. Yes, you had to choose between the higher resolution or enabling 120Hz back then. And I guess based on these specs with the S22 now, Samsung made that choice for us high refresh rate, lower resolution, and no more option to choose. The Quad HD display in 120Hz mode pairing is now reserved for the Ultra, but I think it's just the principle of the thing. It's an example of a spec that's been objectively downgraded, and altogether, year over year, the display is also not measurably better either. It's good, great even, but it hasn't been a point of innovation for Samsung in recent years. Also, underneath the display is Samsung's ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, which is great too, the fastest fingerprint sensor I've used. No issues really once you figure out the placement, but it too is the same as last year. Now, one aspect of the S22 that is objectively measurably better is the performance. But I think it's fair to say that over the last maybe two or three years, performance improvements have been marginal at best. The new S22 gets the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset from Qualcomm, or Samsung's own Exynos 2200 if you're outside the US. Pair that with 8 gigs of RAM and either 128 or 256 gigs of storage, and you get a setup that's more than powerful to obviously handle anything and everything you might ask it to do. In fact, Qualcomm's newest chipset inside this phone I think is even better than expected. No overheating issues for me, no blips, no instances of noticeable lag. Yeah, there was that whole throttling debacle last month with Samsung devices, but a couple software updates should have corrected that. And since then, I'm fairly confident this phone has been running at 100% with every app, game, and task I have it do. However, there's two counterpoints I do want to make when it comes to specs. First, while this phone is more powerful than last year, it's not that much more powerful. And I don't think you'll experience any noticeable increase in speed with your average day-to-day -day usage compared to the S21. Second, 8 gigs of RAM is fine, and it's probably about as much as any person needs, but Samsung used to offer 12 and 16 gigs of RAM options in some of their phones. Overkill, for sure, Maybe they realized people didn't care, didn't utilize it. Maybe there weren't any apps or games that could ever need it. Maybe it was a cost thing. Whatever the reason may be, it's just another example of something that was taken back. All in all, this is still a top tier device and performance is a non-issue. It's also a great investment. Like I said, multiple years of Android updates and security patches to come. But to me, this is an area that feels like we've just reached our peak. Something that I wish Samsung would give in a little bit on with their flagship phones in particular is the battery. This slightly smaller phone packs in a slightly smaller battery than last year, 3700 milliamps. And this is something that should just never get smaller or worse year over year. In fact, this is probably the aspect of this phone in particular that I had the biggest trouble with. I couldn't always get the S22 to last a full day with my particular usage, and that's a shame. Sure, I could bump down the brightness or disable 120Hz or do some other things to keep the phone happy, but I paid for the whole phone, and I want to use the whole phone all the time. Make the device thicker, increase the battery size by 20 or 30%. It's worth it. People will be more than happy to have that versus a slightly thicker phone. Samsung crams 5,000 and 6,000 milliamp batteries inside some of their larger international devices anyway, so I know they can do better than this, and I don't really understand why they don't. They also haven't innovated really when it comes to wired or wireless charging, 25 watt fast charging isn't really fast by today's standards, and that hasn't changed in years. Same with the 15 watt wireless charging. I can't imagine Samsung is still hurting from the Note 7 fiasco. Maybe they are, but, but they could still implement even conservative but noticeable upgrades to the battery and charging. The thing that Samsung and really most other phone manufacturers have mainly been focusing on in recent years has been the camera tech. And with the S22, this is where we pretty much see the only substantial upgrade. This phone now offers a 50 megapixel main lens around back. 
paired with a 10 megapixel telephoto shooter and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. The selfie camera doesn't seem to be any different from the last couple of years, at least with the hardware. And inside the camera app, this phone doesn't really offer any new standout shooting modes or features or other capabilities. But when you take some pictures and videos with the S22, I think you'll notice sharper looking images overall with noticeably increased details and better low light performance especially, which are both great sort of general improvements across the board. This phone also continues to have an incredible array of capabilities that we've seen before, like 8K video, HDR10 plus support, 960 frames per second slow-mo, high level manual controls and cinematic features. I don't know that the average person would utilize most of that stuff, even I don't, but it's all there. And like I said, out of everything, that's where most of the focus has been the smartphones in the last couple of years, that camera tech, which is great. These are the best mobile cameras we've ever had for sure. But if that's all we get nowadays, I think that leaves a bit to be desired. Like I said already, there's really nothing wrong with the S22 specifically. And in fact, I think it's a relatively well-rounded, decently specced flagship phone that also happens to be a fun size. The problem is just that it isn't new or different or better than the S21. There's not a single reason, in my opinion, to consider it. On top of that, I'm honestly not sure what I would have wanted out of this phone that would have made it better. It's not like it's lacking anything, any features, any specs, any abilities, and it's not like it does anything badly either. Maybe better battery life, but I don't see any other way to improve it significantly. And I think therein lies the problem. I genuinely think we've reached peak smartphone and this S22 is evident of that. What do you guys think? Is there something here that maybe I'm missing? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, of course, but hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.